Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics related to geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. In today's session on settlement geography, we are going to learn about the extension of urban geography concept in terms of the classification of urban settlements and various theorists like Mumford, Nelson and several other people who have contributed to various kinds of classification of these urban settlements. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's understand the classification of these urban settlements. But before we go into the classification, let's understand a little about the process of urbanization and its various aspects in terms of its evolution and characteristic of the cities. So the dictionary meaning of term urban as we already know is to be polished, cultured or refined. Now it is just an opposite term for the rustic. It means the association with the rural ways of life. Right? That's a basic connotation. Now, if you look into the urban settlement systems, remember the contribution of Romans, the Greeks and Romans, right? In the ancient. So Romans coined these words where cities, towns in terms of polis, metropolis and all these terms that we study today. So the origins goes back to the Romans. They established the living in urban areas through this word or the concept of urbanitas. Right. So if you observe the civilized man was supposed to be living in cities. This is the connotation which tells us about the development that went on. Right. So if you observe from the ancient cities, the older cities to the modern and postmodern cities that we say today, this is the development that has taken place on the concept that people who live in cities are developed people, civilized people, refined people, cultured people. Right. So all these concepts are coming right from the ancient times. So if you look into the origins of urban settlements, which we also learnt in the evolution of geographical thought, by the way. So if you have not watched the evolution of geographical thought playlist, you can go there and watch it. So origins of urban settlements right from the Neolithic revolution, Mesopotamian civilization and furthermore. So cities, if you observe between these Euphrates and Tigris river, this is the Mesopotamia. So many cities developed. Few of them are named Eridu, Uruk. Or these cities were the ancient cities, first kind of cities which came up, right? And this was the fertile crescent area where it developed. Now what you observe, other cities of the world in ancient alongside Nile River, Indus River and several other places like in China, Yellow River, right? So these places also developed the city life. Now when we look into these urban settlements, it's also important to understand that agricultural production and its food surplus. This was one of the major part that led to the development of city life, right? So settling along waterways provided a needed transportation system. So much of the cities developed alongside the river valleys if you observe, right? So if you observe in Middle Ages what happened? There were a lot of wars, a lot of conquests going on. So there was a rise of the defense towns, fortification. And then after that came industrial revolution. So we have industrial townships, the sectoral model, the single centric concept that we are going to look into the lectures to come, internal structure of the cities. So urban morphology changed gradually. That is what we are looking into, right? So what happened now? The rise of world cities. This is in present. For example, the cities are having identity of a world community. For example, New York, London, Tokyo, Mumbai, New Delhi and so many other cities in the world themselves have a world identity. Right. So that's what we say is the rise of world cities. They are interconnected cities on the basis of information technology, internet networks and transfer of goods and information. Right. So what you observe here is this is the transformation that we have observed through the development phases. Right. So if you observe here, the term urbanization in context of transformation is basically from ruralism, that is rural way of life to urbanism. And it has threefold changes. What are the three major changes that leads to this? Behavioral changes, economic changes and population related that is demographic changes. These are the three major changes. 
right which led to different types of urbanization different classification of the urbanization that's what we are looking into so if you look into these images here the ancient ones the harappa and mohanjodaro then the middle ages townships then the industrial townships and the modern ones look into this journey from here to here to this this is where we have come a long way but what do you see in this picture? This is a morphological transformation, right? So classification of cities or classification of urban settlement is what we also need to learn alongside. So the process of urbanization can be broadly classified into two types, right? The way urbanization happened. So first type is called the self-induced process right so what is this self-induced process it is basically when urbanization occurs due to forces that arise out of local conditions right the in situ conditions that is where self-induction into urbanization comes into picture right for example if you observe the circumstances where villages with certain advantages transformed themselves into urban centers using local resources Right? For example, Indus Valley Civilization or Mesopotamian Urbanization is the best example. Right? They had fertile areas, fertile land, rural surpluses and new technology development leading to the urban centers. Right? This is called self-induction mechanism. Then the next process is the superimposed process. As the word says, superimposed. One is imposed over the other. Right. So this process is the impact of culture foreign to a region. It means something came from outside and led to the urbanization process. Right. So the effect is of rapid transformation of individual settlements by the factors coming from outside. So, for example, a very interesting thing is that the three villages, if you know, it's Sutanuti, Gobindapur and Kalikata. These three villages became what? They became the urban center called Calcutta or we say Kolkata, right? And this was transformed during the British era, the colonial time period, right? So what is it? It's a superimposed urbanization. These were the earlier villages which were combined together and with a central administration and several other processes alongside, it was created as an urban center on the banks of Hooghly River. Right. So this is what we look into the superimposed processes of urbanization. So if you look further, there is a scholar called James Houston. Now, James Houston wrote a book on social geography of Europe in 1953 and he recognized three stages of urbanization. Right. So nuclear stage which is represented by a central area of town inside a wall like Paris, Moscow, the earlier ones, a central point and on, alongside that central point there is a wall. Then the next kind of towns and cities that is formative stages where houses outside the central area along lines of transport. It means the next set of towns developed along the networks of roads radiating away from these particular central areas. So this was where the new set of townships were created right along these routes right and then the modern stage where development of motor transport and growth of suburban towns in a large way which is largely on the technological development right so not just a single center but multiple center and multiple townships got created in a network right so this is how the transformation happens then further if you look into this particular graph it tells us about the transformation process that we learn so initial stage transition stage and terminal stage that is end stage so if you look into this particular urban population with time how we have grown in urbanization you can look here least developed countries gradually transforming to developing countries and then further going into the developed countries if you remember we learned about all these things in the population transition model as well Right? So notice this model of the transition theory, demographic transition theory. This is what we look into in terms of the process of urbanization. So now let's look into the classification by scholars. Right. So first of its kind, the classification of cities on the basis of their age, that is their time period. So Taylor's classification. Remember Griffith Taylor, the great urban geographer. Right. He in 1949 worked in his volume Urban Geography, where he states six stages of growth of urban settlement of Canada. Now what are these six stages? Look into his work. So this is sub-infantile, the initial cluster in a single ill-defined street, unplanned. Then it is infantile, 
right? So this, this is the second stage of town where a little of industrialization, commercialization begins, right? But there are no factories still. Then juvenile stage, that is a youthful stage, you can say, the juvenile, the fairly clear segregation of the commercial quarters and industrial sections, right? Then adolescence. Now it grows into adolescent town. That is stays where differentiation of residential zone with commercial zone happens. And then there is a early maturity, which is basically differentiation of residential areas with two different degrees. It means high class residential, low class residential. Further segregation as you observe. And then there is a maturity in which separate commercial area as well as four zone of residential houses based on the classes. So what do you observe? Taylor's classification, that is Griffith Taylor's work of Canada, gives us an insight about the work that was done based on the analogy of human development. Like human beings grow from infantile to mature stage. So this was the analogy being taken. So it's a basically a organic theory. It means it's talking about how a human grows. So does the settlement grows in the same way, right? That's what we look into this. Then comes the Mumford classification. Very important. Louis Mumford, 1938. He was an American historian and sociologist. He also talks into six stages of development of cities. And remember the work of Patrick Giddies in 1915. He was influenced by Patrick Giddy's work, right? So Mumford's classification, if you observe, this is first one. It's called Eopolis. What is Eopolis? It's beginning of urbanization, of course, rooted in rural scene. It's the inception, basically, right? Then further, he says it becomes a polis. And what is a polis? Polis is the word for town coming from Roman origins. Remember the brotherhood of traders and they become richer and accumulation of wealth happens. This is what we learn in Rostow's model also, preconditions for takeoff. So that is called polis. So in polis is the simple word for town. And then further, the polis becomes a metropolis. This is where metropolitan development comes from. What is it? The mother of the cities. It means this becomes a bigger city or urban area where small towns and villages come together and what happens here again the branching of economy diversification ample food supply so it becomes a trade speciality the metropolis right then further if you observe the fourth one that he says is megalopolis now when metropolitan development goes to next level right there is a disintegration differentiation in cultures diversity economy this is that level when megalopolis is constructed so indifference between people increases like one people do not recognize others they are living in the same city so what do you observe in today's world on the same floor there are two flats but people don't meet often they don't know who is there in the other one this is called indifference right it happens in megalopolis there is a class struggle so there is high class residential middle class residential low class residential right so this is what he talks about and then the city life starts to decline people start to move out of the city because city gets crowded Right? So what happens the next level of city? Trianopolis. Triani is basically where people are not happy in the city. Right? So economic and social scene slowly metamorphoses into parasitic state. That's what he says, right? So this is Mumford's classification. If you observe, he says what? It was same like the end of Roman era. Chaos, crime and so many other things starts to develop and people starts to fly off in the countryside. People starts to move out of the city, go back to the rural areas and settle down, right? And then the last stage that he says is necropolis. What is this necropolis? The decayed city. Right here, all the institutions get eroded gradually. All the cultural institution, educational institution, health institution, everything gets into the degraded phase. Right. So that's the end of the city life that is through war, famine, diseases and several other things. Right. So this is the way he has constructed how a city develops, evolves and again falls down. Right. So this is what we learn. So this is one of the areas of the Glasgow that is Glasgow necropolis. If you observe in Scotland, this resembles from the same thought that we say is the development through ages and then downfall of a city. Then further, if you observe the third kind of classification is on the basis of functions, right? So what is this functional classification? It's basically talking about what? How a city develops through its functional characteristic. What services it provides? What is it known for? What is its main function that drives people to come to and settle in the city? Right. So observe, this is a major widely accepted thing and reliable as well. Why is it reliable? Because people have a better sense of reliability when it talks about a function of a town or city. Right. It is clearly defined in terms of non-agricultural 
activity specialization right so what you observe here Arusso's attempt in 1921 he talks about six classes what is it administrative towns defense towns cultural towns production towns communication towns and recreation towns this is Arusso's first attempt on the basis of function but widely spread and widely known functional classification in world level is whose classification C. D. Harris, remember John C. D. Harris, his classification, his paper called A Functional Classification of Cities in US published in 1943. So John C. D. Harris works on this classification and he talks about these principal nine categories of towns across the world and majorly in United States. So manufacturing towns, retailing towns, diversified towns, wholesale towns, transportation towns, mining towns, educational towns, resort or recreational or retirement towns and and others right so he makes a clear cut bigger categories in United States which also was utilized and looked into several other countries right then further if you observe Howard Nelson's classification so Arusso, John C. D. Harris and Nelson they are all talking about functional classification so what is this Nelson classification it's a service classification of American cities right his paper published in 1955 in the journal geography so what does he talk about here also he talks about nine major activity groups under which different towns have different functions so what does it mean it's not necessary that one town will have all the nine functions. One town could be specialized in one or two or three or more functions, right? But in total, these are the criteria to divide or classify these cities on the basis of functional attributes. So what you observe, functional classification of Indian cities is also to be learned. But what we have done is here we have looked into the world phenomena and Indian cities classification by Ashok Mitra and Mukherjee will be studying in a separate lecture. So please check the playlist on settlement geography geography when we cover that portion. So today we covered the evolution, some aspects of the factors and the processes alongside these scholars and their various kinds of classification of the urban settlement. So now when we have discussed in details about the various aspects of the urban settlements, its classification, several theorists and their concepts, in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on the internal structure of the cities, urban morphology and several other topics. So keep watching, keep learning, do check the playlists that's already available on the channel and do share the videos with others as well.